Hey guys, I'm finally doing a video response to my own giveaway question. Um, what book has impacted you more than any other, either positively or negatively? Um, this one was really difficult because I've had several books in my life that have been very, very important and influential. Um, but this one has probably been, um, has probably enjoyed the longest standing influence. Um, for better and worse, which I'll explain. Um, and for a long time it was out of print. It, it came back into print a couple of years ago. It was very exciting for me. Um, so anyway, here we go. This is The Taley Poe, a ghost story told by Joanna Galdone, illustrated by Paul Galdone. That's right, it's a children's book. Um, this book is, um, it's a telling of a very popular West Virginian folk tale. If you were to Google Taley Poe, you'd probably get other versions of it. I've seen it in, I've got several versions. Um, I've seen it in a number of like ghost stories of North America type books. Um, and this is by far the scariest version of it. And how it ended up as a children's book, I don't know. Because this story was read to me by one of the women who worked at the daycare um, it was read to our group. I was probably four and I, I was traumatized, traumatized. Okay. One of those weird instances, and I think this is common with little kids where, um, it scares you, but you really love it and you want to do it again, but you kind of don't because it really is genuinely terrifying. It was that sort of situation. Um, it's... It's a violent, spooky, not even spooky, it is scary as fuck, <laughs> okay? Like, anyway, this story is, I had nightmares for years, years. I, I probably was begging to sleep in my parents' bed until I was, like, six or seven, like, too old. And, it, I mean, trauma. So... I used to, when I got old enough, um, I started making up um, like elongated versions of the story because I, looking back on it now, I think what I was trying to do, maybe unconsciously, is sort of resolve the story in a way that made it less scary for me. Um, and I remember inventing um, nuances for the story and um like additional additional details that made the monster less scary for me um and anyway so yeah it was terrifying but as i got older um the story i think really fostered an appreciation for ghost stories and folk tales in me um, I started collecting versions of this particular story, um, and I, I thrill in reading it to other small children, um, because it's, it's one of those stories where, like, it's, it's really, really scary, but it's, you know, they love it, too. <laughs> so, um, anyway, this, this really got me into, into ghost stories, and I think ghost stories were probably, like, my gateway drug to magic. Um, and from reading ghost stories and reading folk tales, um, I got into things like mythology and um, eventually the idea of of magic and charms. And because you can't you can't delve into folk tales too deep without coming across um, various kinds of magical practice. And that just sort of continued. And obviously, it was not a formalized thing. I mean, I was still a, a kid. Um, but I think this is really where a lot of my interest stemmed from. Um, so it's both, it's both, um, it has both positive and negative influence for me. Um, I mean, it, it, I was traumatized, like nights of not sleeping, totally not sleeping and like just awful and if you've had little kids you know like when they're scared it's it, they're just like unmanageable um and picture that for years every night for years like my mother still says that um she wishes that she'd she wishes that things like um 
I guess like child therapy and counseling had been more prevalent or that she'd thought to do it because I probably needed it, honestly. <laughs> um, anyway, it's awesome. And if you like ghost stories, you should read it because it'll take you five minutes. And just to give you an idea of the sort of terror I'm talking about, look at this thing. If you saw that coming up the side of your bed in the middle of the night, would you not flip your shit? Yeah, that's what happens, okay? And it eats him. It eats him. And there's an illustration of the, of the monster jumping on him, and um, the exact line is um, scratching him to pieces. <laughs> look! Look at this! Look at this! Anyway traumatized. Yeah. So there's my book. Um, maybe a little bit unusual based on some of the responses I got, but I had another couple of you guys send me children's books um, as responses, so that was pretty cool. So there you have it. There is my choice for most influential book.